are you this evening? Good. How are you? I'm doing fine. I got 1280 here in my hands. Yeah. Hey, uh, can you uh, kind of project into your microphone a little bit so we can hear you a little bit better? Uh, yeah, I'll be there we go. How's Thanks, that? Man. Yeah, that's better. They said I got 1284. Is that the revised version of 1284? Uh, yes, that's yesterday. It's supposed to be at the ACLU. Um, it's a little hard to hear you. Uh, I don't know if you can hold that microphone up to your mouth or something. I believe uh, what Bill just uh, said. Make an adjustment here. There we go. Okay, how's that? No, Much better. How's that? Much better. All right, so... Okay, no problem. So, uh, you anyway, last night I got to go to an ACLU function uh, called the Young Professionals Meeting. Uh, meet Mary Jane, uh, Brian Vicente from, uh, from... I see I'm out of camera angle moving the microphone there. There we go. <laughs> anyway, Brian Vicente... I uh, was there speaking, uh, and he spoke about 1284. Uh, he, 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 you're exactly right. It is kind of dead in the water right now, and they're, and they're going to have to go over it line by line again in hearing. Uh, they, you know, they intend to do that. They have yet to schedule that time for the hearing, though. Okay, and um, if you've read any of the new revisions of 1284, um, can you tell if there's anything in there that was taken out uh, from the first 1284, or if there was anything new put in? Basically, what's going on? I have yet yeah. to. Uh, the, the other copy that I have is on PDA. Okay. And I have yet to, I've yet to uh, go and compare, you know, the computer screen to the actual copy to see... Uh, you can see where they have lined out things, but uh, I have, I've yet to actually have a chance to sit down and read this. I've been uh, pretty tied up today. Uh, you know, we talked about that earlier right. uh, with my medical problem there. Okay. And I couldn't have you in today just because the elevators are tied up with that ambulance going up and down. Right. And Sorry that's... about that the fire truck outside your place. It's all good. Yeah. Well, as, as long as we're talking to you, but I tell you what, Bill... I'm going to hook you up. We're going to hook you up with a camera and a microphone because we should do a weekly Wild Bill checkup with the news because you're totally the guy in the scene. You're at all the political events, and you definitely um, are uh, an extreme activist in the medical marijuana community, and we all definitely appreciate and thank you for what you do. Um, well, thank you very much for uh, letting us know what's up with 1284. Uh, we're going to move on to some other medical marijuana news real quick, unless um, you have anything else that you'd like to share with us before we go. Well, good night, everybody, and uh, be sure to show up at all our rallies. We need your support. Show up for all those hearings. If you're a Colorado medical marijuana patient, don't be afraid. It's your medicine. It's your life. Don't let them take it away from you. Okay, and thank you very much, Bill. And we'll uh, we'll hook you up with some better video quality for <laughs> next time because we'll we'll definitely start doing a weekly with you. So thank you very much. And uh, when he was speaking okay, about <laughs> sorry, thank you, Max, and good night, Aaron. Okay, bye. Have a good night. Bye. Um, so when he was talking about those rallies and all the events and hearings, um, there is a section on our grow room, which uh, can be found at medicinalmarijuana.tv. Click on the grow room. Uh, there's a forum there that says, like, current events and protests and, I don't know, something along those lines. If you check up on that, we're going to be posting um, anytime there are new events, uh, again, new rallies, new hearings and stuff, so that you guys can all make an appearance as well. Cool. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um... Also, this just in, medical marijuana news. I'm sure most of you have heard about the guy who was caught in, where was it, Douglas County? No, his name is Douglas. He was <laughs> in Clear Creek. That's right, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but this guy got pulled over because his tags were expired and um, the cop could smell his medicine. Um, when the cop gave him a ticket for the medicine, his medicine's paraphernalia, and his expired tags, he presented the officer a um, THC ministry 
card. And for those of you who don't know what the THC ministry is, um, it was started in Hawaii. I'm not sure exactly when. I sh probably should have researched that. But I'm sure you could Google it and find out. But um, basically, the THC ministry um, claims that they use cannabis um, for religious purposes, um, kind of like how Native American peoples here in the States use peyote, how Christians and Jews use wine. Um, Rastafarians have been using the herb for absolutely centuries and centuries. So um, he told the cop he's got this you know, membership um, and that it's his religious beliefs, which is why he should let him go. Well, the cop brought him to court anyways. So while I was trying to research this to talk to you about it, I uh, just discovered that a couple hours ago, the feds just raided the THC ministry in Hawaii. Um, I'll read you a little bit that just came off the internet. Federal agents raided the downtown Hilo Sanctuary of the Hawaii Cannabis Ministry Wednesday morning, assisted by local police. Um, Assistant U.S. Attorney Tom Mulek something said that no one had yet been arrested or charged in connection with the raid uh, reached shortly before 3.30 p.m. Wednesday. He declined to provide other details and would not say whether THC Ministry Director and Founder Roger Christie had been detained or not. Uh, the Associated Press reported Tuesday night that the Colorado man who claims membership in the THC Ministry was convicted of a misdemeanor possession of marijuana plus possession of drug paraphernalia and driving an unregistered vehicle. So, um, yeah, it looks like Trevor Douglas of Avon, Colorado, argued that he shouldn't have been convicted on drug charges uh, because marijuana serves the same role in his religion as communion with Christianity, blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, the judge did not agree with him, and he was sentenced or fined $450 plus 15 hours of community service. Aaron, what do you think? Que triste. That's pretty ridiculous. I mean, that's protected by the First Amendment right. Religious and, beliefs? Yeah, and the whole point of them raiding it, that just seems a little over the top, a little unnecessary. Well, I mean... The feds have to do something because, I mean, if you think about it, I guess it does make sense that it is his First Amendment right. The judge basically just said cannabis wasn't religious enough for him or, like, his religion didn't really need cannabis or whatever. I don't know. Who's to say who's to tell who what they sh can and cannot believe in and whether, you know, I don't know. I just know that medical marijuana or marijuana in general has been used by many different cultures for centuries for prayer and yeah. to getting to a higher elevated um, consciousness. Consciousness, yeah, awareness, state of being. And it, it, you know, it helps with uh, feeling whole and feeling as one, feeling connected with your fellow uh, human beings, I guess. And I mean, we can all attest to that even in the medical marijuana. Um, I'd agree with that. Yeah, like it's it really is a culture. Um, so I could definitely see where it could be a religion. And like you said, it has been traced throughout millions, you know, not millions of years, I guess, but... Tens of thousands tens of years. Of, a, a lot. Lots of years. years. Lots and lots of years. Um, that it's, you know... But, well, let's think about it this way, though. What would happen if this guy was completely let go, wasn't charged or fined, because he claimed cannabis as his uh, religious belief? Because, I mean, I could tell you that I use cannabis and my religious belief and how can that not be true because it's coming from me and i believe what i believe in you know what i mean so uh, like maybe because it's not an organized religion but, but that's what the is. judge said it is it's the this thc ministry a, yep and it's been around i know it's not they're legal. recognized federally yes and if they even have little like identification cards that should be proof enough that it's well know, and they have ceremonies they yep. have sacraments yeah they have i've that, been like, to the websites stuff, they do but so, I mean, what happens if this guy was let go and then everyone could say, well, you know, screw a medical marijuana license. Shit, it's my religion. I mean, you know, I'm just going to get out of jail free card based on that. I think that would be pretty cool. 
But anyways, that didn't go down, but we'll see how um, how that works out in the future with any more future cases, because I have a feeling this is going to be talked about a little bit more. It was a little bit of a test case, but um, yeah, do you have anything else on that? Um, well, I guess in a couple weeks here, we're going to try and um, put together a little history of medical and religious marijuana, pretty much just of marijuana in general, and try and share that with you guys to give you um, some new insight, and it looks like we just got some information pulled up that um, the THC ministry it was founded in um, 2000 by Roger Christie. So that has been around for 10 years already. So that's a pretty well-established... Yeah, you know...